Hello there, people of the internet. I'm going over some of the uh, cartridges that I enjoy using for hunting. I go through a lot of uh, military surplus stuff whenever I go out hunting. I think I'm doing this in conjunction with my set of videos to try and earn my way up to 100,000 subscribers. So if you like this kind of content, go and subscribe because I do this kind of content regularly. Anyway, today we are out here talking about our, uh, well, one of my favorites, actually. This is probably one of my more standard go-tos. I have the 308 slash 762 NATO. In this particular case, this is 762 NATO, but we are going to go ahead and, and be talking about 308. Because we're not talking about uh, the military loading, we're talking about the uh, available commercial cartridges that are out there on the market. Now, last video I had talked about 30-06, and 308 is going to be incredibly similar if we're talking about 150 grain projectiles. The military loadings for uh, M2 Ball 30-06 and 762 NATO were actually designed to mimic each other. Now M2 Ball is going to, on average, travel ever so slightly faster, but for the most part, it's going to be a 150 grain full metal jacket traveling at about 2,800 feet per second whenever it comes to those military loadings. However, on the civilian market, those military loadings don't matter much. So I have some information here for some of the uh, velocities and foot-pounds of energy that we can come to expect from a 308 uh, cartridge. Now, this right here, I'm going to go ahead and go on the lower end of the spectrum for 308. In this particular case, this is a 7.62 NATO round. Uh, we are going to be talking about, well, pretty much 308 because 7.62 NATO is a singular cartridge, but if I use one then the other, they're interchangeable for the sakes of this argument. They're not actually interchangeable in some aspects, but that's another argument for another video. So the 308, that's going to be a 150 grain projectile traveling at about 2,800 feet per second. However, there are some commercial loadings out there that can bump that velocity up to about 3,000 to 3,100 feet per second. It, I mean, there's some variations on commercial loadings, but uh, we're going to go ahead and stick with our 2,800 feet per second. Uh, that's going to transfer about 2,700 foot-pounds of energy onto the target. We're talking at muzzle, uh, muzzle distances, basically point-blank range. Now, because most uh, people are not going to hunt out past 500 yards, most people aren't going to hunt past 100 yards or so, but I went ahead and I made my limit the 500-yard mark, despite the fact that I myself would never shoot anything at that distance. Uh, the 500-yard mark, if we have a 150-grain bullet traveling at 2,800 feet per second, that projectile is going to drop about 48 inches or so. And it's still going to have enough energy onto its target at 500 yards to be able to div deliver about 1,000 foot-pounds of energy onto its target at that uh, 500 yards. So within 500 yards, you're still in that uh, plus 1,000 foot-pounds of energy onto the target, which is kind of the Goldilocks area for taking medium to large game. Now, with 308, there's obviously a lot of different variations in bullet uh, construction and bullet weights that you can get into, but for the most part, I see 150 grain and 180 grain bullets for your 308 cartridge. So. 180 grain, that's going to travel at about 2,600 or so feet per second, and it's going to deliver about 2,650 foot-pounds of energy onto its target at a point-blank range. Now, out at your 500 yards, because that is a heavier bullet traveling slower than our 150 grain, it's going to drop about 55 inches. Gravity is consistent, so at 500 yards, you know exactly where your bullet is going to be if your bullet velocities are consistent. You know exactly where your bullet is going to be at that particular distance. Now, because this is a heavier weight bullet, we're actually going to transfer more energy onto the target with a 180 grain bullet, which is going to transfer about 1,200 foot-pounds of energy at that 500 yards, which is still over that 1,000 foot-pound mark. So 308, absolutely adequate to be able to handle pretty much everything here in the United States. I know I said that on the last video, but 308 and 30-06 are both absolutely 110% capable at taking out medium and even your smaller large games. Uh, if you're going to be going after a very large game, I would definitely recommend the heavyweight bullets just to be able to transfer more energy onto the target. And I would definitely recommend not shooting them at incredibly long distances. I wouldn't even recommend going past like 300 yards or so, uh, not unless you are very capable and have uh excellent uh marksmanship capabilities to be able to get proper shot placement now even that even then i wouldn't recommend it because bullets 
do weird things. I mean, things happen. You can have a, a cartridge that has a particularly low or high charge, and so your projectile goes off one way or the other, and that just causes unnecessary uh, injury to the animal without humanely putting them down. Now, here in the state of Florida, 308 is still pretty much like dramatically overkill for the deer that we have around here. Yeah, it absolutely can be done. I've done it myself. But the deer around here get to be about 150 pounds in North Florida. And uh, a center shot mass with a 150 grain projectile from a 308 basically turns that into mist. <laughs> uh, there's not a whole lot that you can salvage from the deer uh, after that point. So that's actually one of the main reasons why for my hunting ammo, I actually showed this off on this channel before, my hunting 308 is actually a lowered velocity and it has more or less the velocity of the 3030 as opposed to a 308 cartridge. I've had people ask me, why don't you just use a 3030? Well, because I like my rifles that are chambered in 308. And like, for example, this Mauser, this is an Oviedo Mauser, chambered in 762 set me technically, but it handles 762 NATO just fine. And this right here is something that I do take out hunting, but I have quite a few rifles chambered in uh, 308 that I enjoy hunting with and having a less powerful round is definitely the, definitely the way to go for that aspect because I don't want to completely turn that deer into a fine red vapor. I would like to take some of that home to actually eat venison is freaking delicious anyway now what we're gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and oh god try to catch my 308 completely fail at that I have this water jug right here and we're going to set this out and turn it into mist with my singular 308 round here that's actually a 7.6 tornado round but it'll absolutely turn this turn this water jug into mist so that is a non loaded round or non hand loaded round it's a factory round lake city round uh, I went ahead and I did, I've made videos on it uh, before where I take the end of the full metal jacket off to give more surface area so we have more energy transfer onto our target, which is going to be really cool. It's going to absolutely decimate this water jug. So let me put this out here and we'll send a round down range. Now 30-06 and 308, those are probably the more powerful cartridges that I take out hunting. I do have more powerful rifles. And I have taken out more powerful rifles, like for example, my eight millimeter Mauser rifle. That's a pretty freaking, that's a pretty freaking potent rifle, right? But uh, for the most part, whenever I go hunting, I try to bring less powerful cartridges because the types of game I'm hunting are, you know, medium, small game. Like for example, pigs and I mean, the hogs get pretty big around here, but proper shot placement with what I use is still absolutely adequate for taking out those guys. I can just save a lot of meat. Oh, we got a little bit of rust on the safety on my Mauser. I'll have to go through and oil this thing. But for the most part, uh, yeah, the, with what I hunt with, it is underpowered to the point to where I don't completely destroy the type of game that I go, I'm going after. But it is powerful enough to be able to handle the larger game if I happen to come across those things. Now, that being said, I'm not exactly going to take my underpowered 308 charges up north and go hunting elk with it. That's something where I would want a full power 308 round or perhaps even a full power 30-06 round. Let me show you what this does against this water chug. This right here is 762 NATO with my custom projectile. Yep, that absolutely, that absolutely destroyed that poor little water jug. Let me go grab that for you guys. Alright, so as is usual, we have ourselves just a little entrance hole right here that's uh nothing to be surprised about but then as that bullet uh transmits a lot of its energy onto the actual water inside of the water jug the projectile itself just kind of comes out the side but the water has so much energy inside of it that it has begun expanding in all sorts of directions and so as a result we have ourselves a massive exit hole out of this thing now despite the fact that the 30 out six and this right here were both 308 projectiles that 30 out 6 was a commercial load, and it was traveling at about 3,000 plus feet per second versus this 7.6 tornado round, which is traveling more about 2,750, 2,800 feet per second. So it was a slower moving round, and we see that inside of our target because this water jug has had less damage done to it. Okay, well, thanks for watching, folks. I appreciate your time. What do you hunt with? I'm sure you guys are going to tell me that if you have not already. Uh, 30 out 6 and 308, those are my typical go-to's simply for convenience but if i know i'm going after something specific like a deer hunt or something like that then i'll transfer over to 
something else, which we'll go ahead and cover on another video. So, thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, share. The description below has linked all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. You guys go off. Have yourself a fantastic day. I will see you guys on the next video. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs>